Now for this scan, we want to do as, as quick and basic a measurement as we can with no alignment of the scan to a coordinate system. So basically, um, a quick and dirty type of uh, measurement. Um, we're going to do parallelism between these two bores. So the way we're going to start that is by adding a cylinder to the front bore and then a cylinder to the back bore. Click on Cylinder. And then the selection tool I want to use here is the little Smart Select. So that's a curvature-based selection. And we can left-click Hold. And this gives us the opportunity to drag up to increase the flood of our selection or drag down to decrease. So I'm just going to bring it back to default, which was perfectly acceptable in this case. Now, we normally want to set some filters to filter out data that we don't want. Perhaps the selection went into some pits or went into the chamfer around a, an oil hole um, or curled around the radius or chamfer at the edge of the bore. And there's a few ways we can do that, but in general here, remove outliers uh, beyond three sigma, that works. And then an angle filter, use normal max angle of about 20 degrees is a pretty reasonable number to have. So if we hit accept, now in the constructed geometries, we have an orange cylinder, which means it's measured. If we click on that cylinder and then look at properties, we can see down here that we have some fit statistics. So we ended up using 75,460 points after filtering. And the standard deviation of our fit is one ten thousandth of an inch. So that's a very good quality bore. It's not tapered. Um, if it was tapered, we'd see that number much higher. It's not oval. We'd also see that number much higher. If we want to see the points that have been considered, we click on cylinder one, and here we can have paired points. We can show or hide paired points. The last thing we can do is actually look at the fitting deviation. So fitting deviation, we hit true. And this colors the points as they are basically distance from the fit cylinder. And uh, here's our color bar, and I have it set to plus minus five ten thousandths of an inch for the green. And this will show us taper and ovality if it were there. It's not, uh, but it's not going to show us uh, the surface noise from the scanner. If I don't want to see that coloration, I can just turn off fitting deviation. Okay, so this larger bore is a little bit more complex. We can see that it's a, a split bore, so it has two components that are clamped together. Um, let's just try the whole thing to start. So we click cylinder. We don't need to pick the method. We can just use the selection and it's pretty good at guessing the right method. So I'm just going to drag up until that floods all the way around there. These filters will remain from the previous setting. So I'm just going to keep everything the way it is and hit accept. Now, if we click on cylinder two, and we take a look, we see something uh, a little odd, actually. The standard deviation of this, we'll call it a composite bore, is 2 thou 5 tenths. That's quite high. That's not a very good bore. So something's going on. And uh, there's a few ways that we can figure that out. Probably the easiest way is just to click on it and show the fitting deviation. And right off the bat, we can see something's going on here. So the cyan color is below the cylinder or outside the cylinder, and then the warm colors are inside the cylinder. And so this looks like we have a shift of the two half bores, so it's not clamping together properly. So what this means is we probably don't want to use the composite bore for this parallelism check. We're actually going to delete cylinder two and not use it. and recreate a bore just on the front half. Like that, and hit accept. We'll check this one. And here we have a standard deviation of two ten thousandths of an inch. And if we look at fitting deviation, we see similar to the front bore, uh, everything is within a plus minus five ten thousandths of an inch sandwich. So that's quite good. I'm going to turn off the fitting deviation for both of these. So the next thing we need to do is compare the large bore, and we're going to compare it to the small bore uh, for parallelism. To do that, we need to 
define the small bore as the datum, and then add parallelism to the large bore. So we'll click on dimensions, datum. Just click on the cylinder, place, and hit accept. And if we want to get a quality of this, we can add cylindricity. It's probably a good idea just to have that documented in a similar way. And we'll set that tolerance to one thousandth of an inch. And you can see that it adjusts the anchoring of the datum. So we'll do the same thing for the second one. We'll first add cylindricity. And then we're going to add parallelism. So this is, we'll set it to two thousandths of an inch against datum A. And we'll hit accept. So now, if you have the tabular view displayed, you can see anything you click on will switch the tabular view to those types of entities. So right here we have a dimension group. And here we can see cylindricity, one and two, both eight ten thousandths of an inch, and parallelism at five ten thousandths of an inch. If your tabular view is not displayed, you just right click in the gray area at the bottom of the screen and toggle it. Your ears will be unchecked. So I'll just toggle it to show. So there we go. We have uh, both cylindricity and parallelism of the large half bore to the front bore.